Welcome to Ski TV. Hi, I'm Brenda Buglione. We're with the U.S. Ski Team above the clouds training at Mount Hood, Oregon. <laughs> Head east out of Portland, Oregon, in Mount Hood, the sleeping giant appears. At over 11,000 feet, this peak towers over the state. Part of the Cascade Range, this volcanic mountain is now relatively inactive, except on the Palmer Snowfield, where skiers and snowboarders are turning up the heat. Mount Hood has always attracted climbers from around the world, but it's become the place to ski in the United States during the summer. The U.S. ski team and other national teams train here. Mount Hood is also home to racing and snowboard camps and provides wintertime fun for skiers and shredders all summer long. training course with the U.S. Ski Team. Coach Egan has some of the boys working on basic drills, keeping their weight on their downhill ski all the way through the turn and then transferring, getting forward onto the new ski. Up and in. Up and in. Up and in. Clicks. Face the fall line more. Up and then a little arc in your hip. A little arc in your hip. There it is. That's good rhythm. Also trying to make sure that the the guys are really filling their body down the hill. They've got to make sure they're looking down the hill and they're really aggressively moving down the hill to keep the skis going, and that they're really on a nice solid outside ski. To make sure we keep our knee and our ankle bent and pointed toward the tip, so that the tip loads up. If the tip loads up, the ski goes into the turn. Look where you're going. Look where you're going. Come on. In Europe, when you uh, ski, the light is really very flat because it's a higher latitude. Oftentimes, in December and January, American athletes have a really difficult time skiing. And they really notice that the first couple of times that they go over there as competitors. So whenever the light is flat, or whenever we have weather like this, I like to stay out and ski with the guys. It's good for them. You know what? I'm freezing my <laughs> off. What are you concentrating on? Um, part of it's my line in GS, and, and part of it is... Uh, it's just making good turns, and I had a, a kind of a rough season last year, and especially in giant slalom. And, and uh, you know, we're just trying to make you know good long turns, uh, even pressure, and, and um, have a lot of speed and power coming out of the turns. Coming up next on Ski TV, see how the U.S. men's ski team stays in shape, and then I'll show you how to improve your turns on the slopes. So stay tuned. Keep it up, man. Skiing is hard work. The U.S. ski team is in Boulder, training to improve their quickness, strength, power, and agility. Get it up! Get it up! Come on! Get it up! What we're doing is basically having a competition between the guys on some different types of drills, testing their uh, progression physically. And there normally is a carryover into the scheme. And so that's why we do it. And also we're doing it to have a lot of fun. We'll start you off. Your start will be on this white line. All right, so let's get uh, 
four big bad dudes up here. Who's ready to go? What team's ready to go? Get set, go. Go, go, go. Well, I think the dream team is winning at the moment, and uh, it's kind of the young, skinny dudes, you know. <laughs> they're the quickest, but they, huh? Yeah, they're pretty quick, but uh, the big, powerful guys, uh, they take it in stride. They don't mind if they get beat by a little guy here, as long as they beat him on the snow. <laughs> the meat train is going to start slowing down, guys. Yeah! Yeah! Go, go! Ready, set, go! What is your strategy with the men's team to raise the level of performance? Well, right now I feel that we have a, a tremendous amount of athletic potential with the men's technical team. And uh, what we need to do is we need to bring up the level of uh, training that we do, both in physical conditioning, which we're working on right now here in Boulder, and also in our on-snow training. Right now the sport is at a different place than when it was than it was when you raced in the World Cup, Brenda. And the new skis, particularly the giant slalom skis, can hold such a tight radius arc that the forces generated are much greater than they were five or ten years ago. Um, so that's what's, what's led to the, the need for more muscle mass in the athletes. They have many more forces to, turn, to deal with in the turns. These are hungry athletes. They really want to succeed, and they're working hard to do it. Ice, ice, baby. Din, 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 din. take lessons. Hey, so listen up. Here's your ski tip for today. One of the basic drills the U.S. ski team is working on is pressuring their downhill ski, committing all their weight to the downhill ski. The way to learn this is to start in a wedge turn. When you pressure your right leg, angulating with your ankle, knee, and hip into the hill, power it, you're going to turn to the left. When you do the same thing to your left leg, angulate ankle, knee, hip into the hill, you're going to turn to the right. Transfer my weight to my left leg and pressure. Transfer my weight to my new ski, pressure it. Come up, pressure. All the way in commitment to the downhill ski. Now, you can take this wedge turn into the parallel turn. It's the same thing. Your skis are shoulder width apart. You're going to angulate with your ankle, knee, and hip all you in your downhill ski. You come across the hill, keep all the weight there. You come up, transfer to your new ski. Pressure right in the fall line, all the weight on the downhill ski. Come across the hill, commit all your weight to your downhill ski. Come up, transfer my weight in the fall line, and commit to it. Pressure. If you do this drill, watch out. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with, ready guys? Ski TV! We love Ski TV! The beautiful Timberline Lodge at the base of Mount Hood was dedicated by President Franklin Roosevelt in 1937. In 1972, the lodge was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Not only skiers and snowboarders are in love with Mount Hood, the beauty of the Timberline Lodge and the surrounding wilderness attract visitors from all over the world. Line meets snow line at the Timberline Lodge, where climbers since the 1850s have begun their ascents of Mount Hood. Through the years, numerous buildings served as lodging on the site. 
during the 1930s, over 500 unemployed men and women were hired by the U.S. government to construct today's lodge. Using native materials like stone from nearby quarries and timber from Mount Hood's forest, the huge castle was built. With pioneer techniques like hand-hewn wood, wrought iron, and chiseled stone, the workers created a rustic, comfortable lodge. The perfect spot to end an active day of climbing, hiking, or skiing, the Timberline Lodge is the ultimate mountain retreat. Snowboarding. It's a sport. Fashion, a statement, a lifestyle. It's also taking the Timberline ski area by storm. At Mount Hood, shredders train at the High Cascade Snowboard Camp. Let's check it out. The scene is, there are two places in the summertime to go summer snowboarding. One is Black Home, British Columbia, and one is Mount Hood. Snowboarding fantastic it is great there's nothing better but it all comes from somewhere it comes from skateboarding one comes from skiing too if you watch these guys going up and down it's, it's kind of like kicking your legs on a swing set how that generates your momentum it's all timing of how you stand up and crouch down and, and the rest is all balance and guts why do they call you gravity it's kind of a nickname uh... Teacher Christine made up for me because yeah. <laughs> gravity affects me differently than most people. The first basics is learning how to pump. The first basic is learning how to stand on the board without falling. Am I dressed right for snowboarding? I know I had to be baggy today. Uh, yeah. you, need, you need to work on the pants. Uh, now, why are you doing this here on this wood? How is this going to help you on the snow? Because when you cross over the snowboard half pipe, you don't have to pump as much and you can still get some speed because it's on an angle but with if you can learn to pump on the skateboard half pipe you can get that much more speed oh that was my highest <gasps> you do any dry land like strength training no no is this one of your training techniques not really do you visualize to improve your technique do you think of any of that you just go free. You just Maybe try it. Maybe a dream it. or something, but uh, there's no program, no like. No, just do it. Just do it, like Nike. She got it. That was it. Yeah, she has it. Chuck, I did it. Whoa! Hey, stick around. No channel surfing. Coming up next: Spider Actor Sports and Ski TVs. Cool Stuff Review. Welcome back to Ski TV. Today, ski wear is more than just fashion. To see what's in for outerwear this season, we recently visited Dave Jacobs, president of Spider Active Sports, who shares where he got the name for his company. The name came from, uh, I was, uh, I designed a pair of stretch pants that had yellow, um, pads around the pants around the thighs and looked like spider legs so when I was agonizing over what to call it uh, people would say you know there's there's your spider pants and actually my son Billy was the one who re really put that bug in my ear bug in my ear <laughs> and uh, so I decided to call it spider and uh, one reason is I, I hate black widows I and mean, I hate spiders I think the most intimidating thing in the world and I think if a black widow was on, on my body, I'd probably die. So I figured that had to be the logo because it was really intimidating. Uh, people might not like it, but they wouldn't forget it. Tell us about the new Momentum line. I'm really excited about that, and so is Tommy. It's, uh, it's going to be a, a, a group of, of very technical shells. Shell jackets, uh, full zip, pullover, one-piece suit, pant. And that sort of represents him, his image of something that's bulletproof technical I and mean, the, the jacket has 10 pockets and you can wear it skiing you can wear it fishing you can wear it hunting but it's stylish i think it appeals to tommy's generation and uh, I, I think it's going to be a very exciting line he spent a day and a half here and, and I, I presented proposed sketches uh, of the ideas and and i said to him so how would you wear this jacket and he said well i'd probably wear it fishing 
And I said, well, what do you need when you fish? What do you have that you need a place to put? And he says, well, I got a seven inch knife. I said, great, so let's make a, a knife pocket. And even though it's a ski jacket, I mean, it, it represents the, the usage that he would uh, apply it to. I've been a ski racer for many years, and I've had spiders crawling up my legs and down my arms. And now as a former racer, I want to look athletic and feminine. How has Spider's line changed to meet those needs? Well, actually, it's, uh, it's interesting. When Spider has such a, a specific, defined image of race, that people think it's only race clothing. We're, in reality, uh, race is 10% of our market. There's about 100 styles of, of uh, clothing that uh, cater to women, children, average skiers. You don't have to be a racer to wear a spider. What's up with ski boots? The Technica rep gave us the wrap on the latest innovation for racers and recreational skiers. I'm with Barry Galvin with Technica Ski Boots. Barry, I want you to tell me about this new boot and the new technology built into the sole. Well, what Technica has tried to do with their TNT AVS is provide some dampening and vibration absorbing qualities so that the skier gets a smoother, more comfortable ride on the snow. What we do is we have two contact points on the binding and between the contact point and the sole of the boot is a vibration absorbing TechSorb pad which dissipates and absorbs the energy and the shock and the vibration through the sole of the boot before it reaches the sole of the skier's foot. It has a 50% reduction in vibration, which also helps you reduce fatigue and make you fresher throughout the day. I like the feeling of, of being successful and when I'm out working out and I think about the fact that I want a silver medal, I'm like, you know, I want more. I want a gold. I want more medals. I want the top. Did your success at the Olympics inspire you to train harder this year? Yeah, it did um, to, to some degree, but the thing I tried not to do is, is really change my program a lot because it's been working for me. I got here being, you know, with the program and doing what everyone else does and, and hammering along the same as everybody. and. I'm trying not to change anything up too much since, since the games because I think that's a common mistake people make is they think, oh, well, I've made it, now all these things have to change. And it's like, no, well, you know, what got you there in the first place? It was your hard work, your dedication, and your, and your time spent with the team. I mean, there's those days when I get up and I'm like, no way am I working out at all today. I am so tired, I'm not doing it. And, you know, and then you look at the little rings in your corner of your mirror or whatever, you know, get too fired up and you go, all right, all right, I'll just run my intervals and, you know, that'll be, that'll be good for me. What are your goals for next year? Well, my goals for next season are to um, get consistent on the World Cup in the top five standings. Another goal I have kind of in long-term future is to win the World Cup overall, which I'm going to start start that process this season by racing 50% of the technical events throughout this year and then slowly over the next couple years building that up to 100% to of, of all the races. We've all heard of you as the wild one. I'm doing lots of fun stuff and, and skiing is my life, but it's not like my whole life. And if they want to call me a wild one for that, then, then fine, you know, I'm the wild one. Wild ones always win. Congratulations on your gold medal, that's great. You've done a lot for skiing and it was so exciting for us to watch it. Yeah, hard work pays off. Yeah. I, uh, it came together for me last year. I trained hard the, since uh, 92. Uh, skiing 55 days per summer, primarily focusing wow. on giant slalom and slalom. And I really believed in myself this past season, you know, I was consistent in World Cup. And by the time I got to Lillehammer, I was ready to roll. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of other guys may have choked up a little bit, let the pressure get to them. But my, my main goal out there was just to have fun and ski the course the best I could. And sometimes uh, every dog has his day, and I think it happened for me.
last year I had a breakthrough race in Whistler, British Columbia. I got second in the World Cup, and that was the, the big breakthrough for me, you know. I'd been top 15 before that, but I finally got second, and I knew that I could do it from then on, and I carried my confidence through last summer, and then I went into uh, December and, and had some great results in, in Super G and Downhill. And, you know, actually before the Olympics, I took a break for about a week. I went to the uh, Canary Islands. Wow. Went down there and did some dry land training. Kind of did a little peace of mind therapy type stuff. And then when I got to Lillehammer, I was like, damn, when are, if I'm ever going to win a race, you know? And it, it came at the right time. <laughs> it sure did. Yeah. I was in really top form there, you know. I was, I was training really hard in the afternoons and just really relaxed about it, you know. There wasn't mm -hmm. really too much to prove for, on my point, you know. I was an underdog. Everybody knew that. They didn't expect <laughs> me to win. And, and I didn't expect myself to win, but when it came down to it, I just focused on the simple stuff of skiing and and uh, having good confidence and, and courage. And I went out there and, and flashed it and got a couple of nice treasures at, at home right now. The most important thing is the weights. That's been my, my uh, secret to success the past two years. I've really busted my butt in the weight room, and it shows <laughs> off. And, it does and, show uh, off. <laughs> you know, I'm not gloating or anything, but I weigh 200 pounds, and I'm pretty muscle-bound. And you have to do that way now to resist the forces and, uh, and hold the fastest line of downhill and super G. So I'm, I'm in good shape, and I'm and, um, always working hard to stay in the best shape I can. That's our show for today. We'll be following the U.S. ski team and professional ski racers through their entire season. We'll bring you special features on equipment, ski tips, and personalities. We're getting in shape. We want you to get in shape. And join us for a great year on Ski TV.